So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him into our service, and then we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, guys, we come to you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your truth. God, we thank you for good friends and faith and family and fellowship. And God, I pray, Lord, you send anointing, Lord, upon our singers and the preaching tonight, Lord, so that we can be able to be in the presence of your Son. And God, I pray that you sweep, here like a, sweep through here like a rushing mighty wind. Bless those who have to give tonight. Bless those who have not. And we'll give you all the glory and the honor for it. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We've, uh, over the past, it's at least been maybe a year and a half, I don't know, over a while now, uh, we've developed a really good work and friendship and uh, in the ministry with Brother Jonathan and, and Kelly and a bunch of them. But uh, it is a good opportunity for them to be here tonight with us. And uh, it's hard, especially when you're a pastor of a church, to go somewhere else and, and minister and take part. But they are here tonight. So we're going to turn everything over to them. And uh, so let's give them a warm welcome as they come to sing for us tonight.
I can't hear me because I'm not by a microphone right now, but I'm telling you, there's something about this place. Um, and I, I pray that you don't lose it. I pray that you run toward it. I pray that you move forward full steam ahead. And uh, I'm telling you, there's something about this place. I know his name is Jesus, and he's in this room. Man. And I know that there's several of you that brought him with you tonight. And uh, I just want you to know that, um, man, I truly love this place. And I love your pastor, but he is a liar. But um, <laughs> uh, I, didn't tell, I didn't tell him my wife likes to spend money. But, I mean, anyways. But, um, so I've, I've learned that. that when, I, when I come here, he, he likes to... Uh, he likes to tell small fibs. Have you all noticed that about him? Okay. Okay. That's it. No, I love it. So anyways, this next song we're going to do is a song we wrote. It's called Who is Jesus? I pray it's a blessing to you, but most importantly, I pray that you know who Jesus is.
yeah. Um, the last time we, we came, what was it last? Was it last Sunday morning we came in business? And uh, we just testified about uh, my wife, Karen, and, and this is her sister, Christy, and we testified about her uncle being in the hospital, and we're hoping he gets to get closer to home uh, in the next few weeks. He's still in a coma. We've seen God do a lot of miracles in the past couple weeks with him breathing on his own and different things, but we're truly praying for a miracle. And, uh, and we know that God's already done the miraculous, but, you know, we want him to wake up, and, and we want God to continue to move in this. And, and we're giving him all the glory for what he's already done. Yeah. Uh, it's miraculous that he's moving his limbs. It's miraculous that he's breathing. Yeah. Uh, and we know that it's in God's time. But uh, me and Kelly and, and my wife, we, we wrote this next song called Living a Miracle. And we, we began writing it uh, probably a month or so ago before any of this happened. But... I have a desire to see a revival in the church like the book of Acts. Uh, and, and I believe it can happen. I mean, if you read your Bible as if any, none of those things can ever happen again, you do not believe in the same God I believe yeah. in. Uh, so I, I read my Bible, and I mean, I want to live in a revival like the book of Acts. And I believe that you are in the midst of that. I do. I, I think it's nothing short of miraculous that you can have a church on Redbird Road in Williamsburg, Kentucky that goes from a little building like that to something like this. I mean, you need to give God some praise. Amen. 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 And, uh, I actually pray for Chrissy. I threw this one at her tonight. She never played with us. So, um, just listen to the words.
We'll do a couple that I think everybody will know. Um, I look, I look across the room and I just wonder, you know, uh, how many, do you know Jesus tonight? And you don't have to raise your hand. I just want to ask you that. Do you know who Jesus is tonight? Amen. I like the hand raises. You know, I just, I pray for you all so much. I don't know if you realize that or not, but I do. I pray for your ministry. I love seeing it grow. I, I love the talks that you're barely in a building and on Sunday mornings you don't have room. And I think it's nothing short of amazing. And I, I do. I mean, I'm praying for you all. I, 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 I pray that this thing busts wide open. I'll just be honest. I mean, I've been praying with your pastor about this. Um, the casino? Listen, that don't even be. That's a beautiful building, though, ain't it? It would make a beautiful place for a school. It would make a beautiful place for a church, wouldn't it? Amen. Some of y'all better like that. I mean, uh, yeah. Because that will preach. If, if you're for that being there, I'm just telling you, we live in one of the poorest communities in the country. And we think that's going to make people wealthy? That's not going to make people wealthy? No. Jesus Christ is the only thing I need for my wealth and my health and my needs. Nothing else. You can't turn to sin and expect to be prosperous. That's not how it works. But, anyways, I'm, I'm preaching like preaching like We're going to sing a song. I put Deanna on the spot when she walked in the door. I said, I need help because we got some that can't make it. We're going to do Homecoming. And I hope you all like this song. Um, uh, if you know it, join in with us. Um, and I'm, a ner I'm nervous. I like being nervous.
I'm the kind of pastor he calls a double barrel shotgun. I was like, what? He said, you can sing and you can preach. I was like, man, thanks, buddy. But he ain't heard me preach. That's a funny thing. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, we're going to be in the book of Luke. Book of Luke. I uh, told Josh yesterday, uh, it's kind of crazy. So I, I've been on a, a, I've been taking a sabbatical from the church. Next Sunday will be my first Sunday back. And it's kind of neat how this worked out because we really didn't plan this. Um, I, I was here November the 6th, right? The Sunday morning that he copped out for a toothache. What that it? <laughs> and uh, um, anyway. But, uh, and that was the start of my sabbatical, right? And, uh, and, and you all invited me to come back the next Sunday. And I just felt like that for what I needed to do for me and my family, I, just, I had to step back and I had to go hear some good preaching. Uh, I did come in here, Josh wants to, but, uh, um, so, but uh, I had to hear some good preaching the last few weeks and, and just, uh, just get my tank refilled, right? And then I thought it was really neat that um, I just sent Josh a text and I was like, hey, I was like, uh, Sunday is the last Sunday before I go back to Sunnyside. If you all are a pastor you know or anybody else that you know that if I can fill in for, I, I would like to preach Sunday night or like to preach Sunday. And of course, uh, uh, he decided that he wanted to be lazy and not preach tonight. So he was like, you just come on here. Uh, I'm getting you back good. I'm getting good. It's getting thick. Yeah. So uh, anyways, it is good to be here tonight. I am thankful to be here. I am thankful for this opportunity. I do not take it lightly that you allow me to stand behind this pulpit. I want you to know that I prayed this week about this message specifically for you all. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. I did tell him, he asked me where I was preaching from. And I said, well, I'm going to be in Luke chapter number 18. I said, but if anything happens like yesterday, I was at Skyhope. And man, God showed up. Skyhope Recoveries in Somerset. It's a women's facility uh, that are just battling many different things. And they're there. That could be, that could be drug addiction. It could be abuse. Whatever it may be. And, and a group of churches got to go. And we got to feed them and sing. And, and I got to preach. And, and as I was sitting there, I told Josh, I said, you ever felt like God dealing with you? Like you had notes. You had an outline. And God said, that's not where we're going. Right? And that was it in the moment. But I'm telling you, God showed up not about me preaching. He showed up before we even started. We were mic checking. And there were women getting saved. Like it was the correct. Yes. Amen. It, amen. Yeah. Give God a hand. I mean, it was awesome. We had, there was so many people. I lost count. I lost count of the decisions being made. And, and, and we were just, we were mic checking. It hadn't even started yet. And it wasn't because of our singing. It was because the obedience of the church showing up and showing out and letting God move. That's all it was. And I was telling him how Sean and his wife, they were just going around mingling with the women and talking to them. And then this testimony started flying of women being saved and lives being transformed. So pray for that ministry. Pray for Hope, uh, Scott Hope Recovery in Somerset. And pray for those women. There was some women telling me just crazy stories of just how they were a, a part of sex trafficking. Like one lady began to give me her testimony when we were leaving uh, that she was sex trafficked um, to the point where we're talking uh, placed on a bed with an IV in her arm so that she could not get up. Think about that for a minute. Yeah. In America. Isn't that crazy? But yesterday she gives me a testimony and says, you know, I know that the Lord has saved my soul and I know that he can use my story. That's a, that's a strong story. So we're going to be in the book of Luke chapter number 18. Uh, are you there? Everybody there? If you got a Bible? Um, I feel like I'm echoing like a lot. Am I echoing? Am I too? Is this fine? Am I good? Okay. So anyways, Luke chapter number 18. We're going to get started. I guess see, I'm not even there. Luke chapter number 18. And uh, so excited. I'm just 
fumbling around, nervous. I was a nervous wreck yesterday. I like being nervous, though. I, I'm part of that. Part of that. I'm thankful for God giving me this time to go around and and just uh, just to hear good preaching. And I'm just kidding, Josh. I I, I enjoyed getting to come hear you too, brother. Um, I did, and I'm thankful. So here we go. Luke chapter number 18. We'll start in verse number 35. Verse number 35. It says, And it came to pass that he was come nigh unto Jericho. A certain blind man was set by the wayside begging. And he heard the multitude pass by. He asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passes by. And he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him. That he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more. Thou son of David have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near he asked him. Saying what wilt thou have. What wilt thou I shall do unto thee. And he said Lord that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed him, glorifying God, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this moment that you've given me to be here, to stand behind this pulpit. Lord, I pray that your word tonight does not go void out into the congregation. I pray that you use this word, Lord, and apply it to me, Lord, that this more so even when I leave here today. Lord, I pray that you would apply it to this congregation. I pray that we would be stronger together as Christians, Lord. I pray that as sister churches, no matter who we represent as a, a body of the church, we know that we are the body of Jesus. And I pray that you take this word and you apply it to our hearts, you apply it to our lives, that we can move forward. For you. And Jesus said, I pray. Amen. Amen. So I was praying about this, and I, I knew that uh, Josh had told me that you all were, were starting your Christmas series, I guess, this morning. So I was thinking, well, Lord, I don't want to preach on Christmas because, you know, Josh has got that covered. And, and, and you know, give me a message, Lord, for, for the people of Cameron Free Will. And, and I felt like he gave me this message today. And, and we're kind of going to maybe talk about the new year a little bit because everybody's going to be there in a couple weeks, right? And then everybody's going to be making the new year's resolutions. Anybody already started? Anybody talking about it? Or some of y'all just old enough now to know, listen, I ain't going to do it. Right? Like, I ain't, I'm just... I ain't gonna do it. Yeah, right? But but some people, until you get to my age and older, you, every year it happens, doesn't it? And listen, the New Year's resolutions are actually a good thing. I mean, they can be, right? Especially when they're spiritual. When you begin to think about, God, where am I falling short? Where am I falling short in my walk with you, you Jesus? Well, I mean, is there more time in a day that I can find, Lord, that I can dig in your word, that I can, that I can pray, that I can pray for others, that I can help others. I mean, so a New Year's resolution tonight might just be that maybe you should seek your walk with Jesus, search your heart, and think, am I living for him? Am I truly doing everything that I can to live for him? You see, because with the New Year's approach, and right, we, we talk about New Year's resolutions, and it's all about change, new habits, dropping some weight. Um, don't look at me. I know. I've gotten chubbier. Listen, I went somewhere in the, in the past week, and you know what the first thing somebody said to me was? You're a little bigger than you used to be. <laughs> yeah. You got a bigger mouth than you used to have. <laughs> right? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I thought it. And I just processed it, and I was like, it's good to see you too. Right? But anyway, so New Year's resolutions can, can mean a lot of things for many different people, right? I mean, it, it can be uh, things that we're, we're looking for change, we're looking for new habits, new patterns, to see results in our life. And when we make these resolutions, it seems like that we just get a couple weeks into it, and we just sputter out, right? It seems like that's what happens. But I want you to not to think about this, come on, free will. What God is doing in your church and what he has in store. There's a reason why people are coming. And it's to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's why the people are drawn. People are drawn because you're loving on them. People are drawn because you're discipling people. And then those people are going out. Listen, I know Josh is not bringing these people in here by themselves. No, it's you, right? It's the excitement within your heart that what God has done within you, what he's done through you. Listen, I love the service that we came and the women on the stage gave their testimony of what God had brought them through. And, and just, it's amazing what that does, 
right? I mean, that's what you've got. If you've got nothing else, you have your story of what God's yeah. doing through you. And that's how you get people here. So as we go into this new year, I begin to think about this man, this blind man that, that saw that they didn't see Jesus, but he knew he was coming by, right? I believe he heard the chatter. And I think that's what's happened here at Cumberland Free Will. I think it started with a chatter. Like, have you been hearing about Cumberland Free Will? You know, I mean, here they were just five, six years ago in that little bitty church over there. And, and now, the, you know, I just wonder what's going on. Come and see. Come and see, right? And that's how it starts. So people, people don't really believe it at first. They don't, they don't really buy into it at first. But you finally convince them to come, right? Maybe you're here tonight. Could you raise your hand and say, you know, that's how I came. That's how I got here. Anybody like that? You just heard about it. You heard that was something was going on. And you decided, you know, I think I'll go visit. Anybody? Is that how you showed up? Amen. 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 Yeah, there's something about this place. God's doing something special in this place. So I'm going to ask you tonight, as a Sunday night crowd, are you ready to move forward? Amen. Are you ready to move forward? Are you ready to slide down a knock? Some of y'all got comfortable in your seats. You know how I know? You sit in the same place you was the last three times I've been here. But would you slide over for somebody? I think you would. I do. I, I believe there's faithful Christians in this room that if, you, if you've seen someone that you had been inviting, that you had been praying for, and they showed up, and they were in your pew and in your seat, I think you would just worship God for them being here. Amen? I believe that. But you in the room, I ask you, are you ready to move forward? See, because in, spiritually, I think in 2022, if we all look at our lives spiritually, we realize that we need it to grow. Listen, I pastor a church, and I can tell you that if I look at my life spiritually in 2022, I promise you, I need to grow. I guarantee you, if I set your pastor down and I say, Josh Bowman, do you think you're right where God wants you to be, or can you grow? I guarantee you, he says, brother, I know I can grow. I need to move forward with my relationship with God. So maybe you're here tonight, and spiritually, you're just, you've been in a, in a little bit of a rut. I'm telling you, you just got to move forward. 2023 doesn't have to be the same old thing. Matter of fact, if you're ready for change, if you're ready to move forward, and I'm not saying to turn this place upside down and paint it different colors, put the different carpet in. I'm not saying, that's not the change I'm talking about. I'm talking about spiritually growing. If you're ready for that, I want you to help me today because I want you to move. I want, it is time to move. It's time to move forward, and I want you to look at your neighbor. I want you to help them with my sermon title. You ready? Look at the person beside you. It's like, don't just stand there. Louder. Don't just stand there. You got to bust the move. Huh? <laughs> yeah, some of y'all got it. Some of y'all that didn't get that, you're not old enough yet. Right? But you do. You got to move. Listen, I mean, movement is vital. I'm telling you, movement is essential in becoming more like Jesus. You cannot stand still and become more like Jesus. Movement is essential. Following Jesus is a process. Amen? So if you're either moving forward or you're standing still, there is no in-between. I mean, you're either following on his coattails, lagging a little behind but still taking steps, or you're in a standstill. So I ask you tonight, are you ready to move? Because most of you, if you're my age or older, you realize that time flies. Amen? It does. Time flies. And, and, and I mean, when you think about it, I mean, seriously, it's December 2022. And before we know it, it'll be December 2023. Amen? Yeah. It flies. And it's not that time is going any faster. I think it's that as we get older, sometimes in the church world, not everybody, but sometimes we become professional procrastinators in our spiritual lives. That's what I think happens. But I'm telling you tonight, if everybody in this room will get on board with the, the vision that God's placed on your pastors, your deacons, and leadership of this church, if everybody gets in one mind, one accord, praise for those things, praise for God to move in those situations, it'll be amazing what this church does for what it's worth to take. But you've got to be willing to move forward. See, in Luke chapter 18 here, as I read this this week, I begin to think about... You know, Jesus and his followers, how they're arriving at Jericho. Man, could you imagine the buzz going around? I would have, I, man, I, I just can't, I can't wait to meet Jesus. I mean, he's going to think I'm a crazy guy. He, he knows already, but I'm just saying, could you imagine what it would have been like to be in Jericho? And Jesus is rolling in and his disciple, could you imagine the buzz going around? And I began to think about this scripture, you know, because it, it, they heard the, the crowd approaching. That's what happened. The blind beggar, I believe he heard the crowd approaching is what I think happened. And there was a commotion going on, right? And he 
he's like, it's Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. He begins to hear that. And I believe he begins to think to himself, I've heard about this man. This man heals the blind. This man raises the dead. This man changes people's lives in an instant. And I believe he began to get some faith within him. And think, oh man, if he'll just hear me crying out. If I can, Jesus! If I can just scream loud enough to get him to hear me, everything within me believes that I'll be able to see. And there's always one in the crowd, isn't there? Keep it down. You hear yourself right now? That's what the scripture says. I mean, this man was on fire. And maybe some of you are in the room tonight and you are on fire with Jesus. You are pumped up for what God's doing in your life. And everywhere you go, you're excited. And maybe there's a naysayer beside you all the time. But I just don't know about him. I just don't know about her. Let me tell you something. Just do like the blind beggar. Jesus! Just say it a little louder. That way, if they're beside you, maybe they, oh, maybe that spirit will just draw off of you and you just never know. I mean, they might fall out. Yeah, they might be a running spell up in here someday. I don't know. Maybe you've had one before. But I'm saying, just because the people around you haven't grabbed a hold of it yet, you've got to believe like the blind beggar. Jesus said, your faith has healed you. That's what Jesus said. Jesus knew. I mean, could you, I mean, Jesus walking through, and this guy just hearing the commotion. Jesus! Jesus! My marriage is crumbling. Jesus! Those around me are sick and dying. Jesus! Keep it down. Keep it down. Which one are you today? That's a good question. That's on the notes. Are you the blind beggar screaming for Jesus? Or are you the naysayer? I'll let that set a minute. We'll just pause. Ponder on it. You're one or the other. You're one or the other. You're the blind beggar just screaming for Jesus, for somebody. It doesn't have to be for you. It could be in the sake of others. Listen, everybody in this room knows somebody needs Jesus. Are you screaming for Jesus? Or are you one of the ones in the background saying, hey, t- tone it down. Hey, tone it down. Anybody? Because listen, it's time for us to move. You know, I was reading this back through, and, and I went to the book of Mark chapter, chapter 10. You can read this kind of this same story, right? And uh, I was reading Mark chapter 10, and, and it gives us a little more information. It says that Jesus enters to Jericho, but, the, but there's actually no mention of the blind man being on the road. However, Mark says later, as Jesus is leaving Jericho, the blind man is there. So that leads me to believe that the blind man had to move in order to get in the path that he knew Jesus would be coming through. Think about it. I mean, you, got, you read the, I'm not saying that Luke's wrong, Mark's right. You read them all together, right? It gives you a, a perspective, right? It gives you a greater view of what's happening here. And, and I do, I believe it. I believe that when Jesus rode into town to Jericho, I don't think the blind beggar was sitting there. But I think the excitement, the commotion. Listen, church, that's you. Come on, free will. I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know if you just, you could come numb to what's happening here. But as an outsider looking in, this don't happen all the time. This does not happen all the time. Don't take this for granted. I believe that the blind beggar knew that Jesus was in town. And even though he was blind, I think he just, be, he just began to follow the voice. He began to follow the crowd. He began to follow the commotion and put himself in a place. He moved himself into a position for Jesus to hear him. Is your heart in a position for God to speak to you? Is your heart in a place? Have you moved yourself into position for what God has in store for you next? So many times we get so caught up on the past. My goodness. We get so caught up on the past. But you think about this blind man. I believe that he moved himself into position. I mean, think about this. I mean, you've got a blind man that receives his sight because he's willing to make a move. I mean, what if the blind man had given in to the crowd? When they told him to just pop it down. Well, what do you think would have happened if he'd have just been like, they're right. What am I even doing? He'd still be a blind man. Amen? He'd still be a blind man. Well, what if the blind man chose not to move into that position? I believe he would still be a blind man. I believe it was his willingness to move. It was his willingness to position himself. It was his faith. The Bible says that healed him. It's like when somebody knows, comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. 
We'll agree to disagree if you disagree with me on this. But I really believe that the moment, and for me, the moment that I stepped out of the pew, I was a saved man. When God was calling me, when he was, when he was knocking on my heart, and I knew that I was lost, and I knew that I needed him, I seriously believe the moment that I took the first step, my life was forever changed. Don't get me wrong, I collapsed on an altar, I confessed him as my Lord and Savior, and I told him every sin that I'd ever done and asked for forgiveness of him, but I truly believe it was the moment of the faith that I took a step. Jesus changed my life. Are you willing to make a move? Don't just stand there. Bust the move. Listen. Church, I love you all. I think you've got a phenomenal pastor. I think your people are perfect for this community. Because I look around this room and I know some of you. But we're just broken people held together by Jesus. Amen? That's a good thing to be held together by. The doctor tells my uh, wife's uncle's family that it's in God's hands now. It was pretty good hands to be in, babe. Because I'm still believing. Listen, as a Christian, why would I give up on this man? Before God's checking him out. I mean, how about we believe like that? That while he's still breathing and he's still fighting, maybe God's not done. Listen, and I love physicians. If you're a physician in the room, if you're a nurse in the room, I thank God for you. I do. I do. I I do. I, I do. But listen, we all know as believers that I am in his hands. Through all eternity. And until he tells, until he chooses to take my last breath, that's what I'm checking out. But until that time, I'm moving forward. So my plea to you tonight is, will you move forward? What are you missing out on because your unwillingness to move? What, are you, what blessings are you missing out on because God is crying out to you. He's calling out to you for something that he's asking and pleading with you to do, but you won't move. What is it that you're missing out? What is it you're missing out because you won't position yourself in a place that where God can use you? Maybe for somebody here, God just wants you to step back a minute. Well, that's crazy, is it? I really believe that I had to step back for the last month or God was not going to be able to use me. I had to step back, get in his word. I had to step back, just listen to some good good preaching so that I could position myself in a place where I could be used by God. Not used by the church, used by God. So are you moving forward? Are you moving backward? Are you willing to position yourself, position your heart in a position as Jesus passed by that he can use you? What are, you, what, are you, what are you missing out? What are you missing out on because you've become so comfortable with your current situation that you won't even plead out to God anymore? Some of you all have become so broken in your mess that you have given up. Is that you? The blind beggar, could you imagine the years of him standing just like that in the same spot if he wasn't willing to position himself? And maybe you are here tonight and you have been through a valley and you are in the valley and you are stuck there and you are broken, you are undone, but you've got to the point. That's how it's always going to be. What are you missing out on because you will not position yourself? I'm going to tell you, when we get desperate, that's when God does his best work. Yeah. Yeah. When, you, when desperation hits, that's when God does his best work. If you're willing to position yourself, if you're willing to call out to him. Let me tell you something. I think desperation has, a, has an expiration date. I think sometimes that we, we get desperate, but then pride sets in, so we won't call out to God. And then when that pride sets in, it begins to harden our heart. And then before you know it, You sit in the same seat every single Sunday, not expecting to be a blessing to God, not expecting to receive a blessing from God, and you leave the same way each and every time. It's because you've got to a point that that desperation has got your heart so hardened that you don't even hear God trying to speak to you. It's not your pastor. Listen, as long as he's preaching, this right here, it's not your pastor. It's you. Are you willing to move forward with Jesus? Or are you standing still? Because God moves in times of desperation. He does. I'm going to give you a couple of things here. And I'm going to start winding it down. Because I think we begin to hesitate as Christians. When God speaks to us, you know, you get nervous because God's asking you to do something. He's wanting you to get out of your comfort zone. That usually means it's God. 
I'm just saying. It's very rare. God, you get, I mean, any, any time that God's speaking, usually it's when I'm out of my comfort zone. It's, it's pretty rare that he wants me to do something that's in my wheelhouse, right? But we begin to hesitate. But you know what hesitation does? When you delay, when you hesitate, it destroys that, that desperation desire that you have to be around God. And I begin to think about what delay happens. Listen, come with me. Well, you cannot delay. You cannot hesitate on what God's doing right now. You've got to press into him. You've got to press forward. And I know it's a blur and it seems craziness that some of you all are already talking about how you expand. We just feel, I don't even know what's happening. Yeah, that's, okay. that's okay. I don't know what's happening either. All I know is people are still coming. People are getting saved. Lives are being changed. So you just move forward. You stick with God and move forward. Don't hesitate. Don't delay. Because spiritual hesitation, it will destroy that hunger within you. It will. Spiritual hesitation will destroy the spiritual hunger with you. Why? Because I'm telling you, there's an expiration date on, on there's, there's an expiration date on desperation. If we wait too long to make the move, then we will naturally begin to fill that void with things from outside. That's what happens. God will want to fill the void in your life if you're down and you're out. And if you don't turn to Him, then over time the devil will weasel his way in, and you will begin to fill that void with something that you shouldn't. Yeah, amen. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's drugs. Maybe it's a man or a woman. Yeah, you single people in the room. I'm talking to you. Listen, there's a void in your life that you think that a man or a woman can feel. And you are badly mistaken. That void has led you to a place of desperation because you feel like you're going to be alone forever. Let me tell you something. If you will fill that void with God's Word, if you will fill that void with prayer time, if you will fill that void with Him, I promise you come out better on the other end. Yeah. But if you're not careful, we'll take that void in our life. When we don't go to Jesus, we don't take it to an altar, we don't dig in His Word, and then what happens? The devil creeps in. I just, just look over here. Look at this. Just watch this. Just drink this. Just hang out with this crowd. That's what happens when we delay. That's what happens when we hesitate. I don't believe this blind, blind beggar was hesitating. I believe that when he heard that Jesus was in Jericho, I believe he began to move as quick as he could to position himself in a place to be blessed by God, in a place to be healed. Hesitation. Church, are you hesitating? The next thing about delay, you know what delay and hesitation does? It's deadly. And some of you in this room tonight may not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you're just delaying it. And delaying it. And delaying it. Because you think you have time. You think you have time. Let me tell you something. Nobody knows the hour. And I'm not trying to scare you into this. I'm just really trying to get you to think about the decision that you're making by delaying. When God's knocking on your heart, when he's stirring within you saying, listen, I want you right where you're at. I want you. But each service, you walk out those doors and you delay it and you delay it. Can I tell you that delaying is deadly? I'm just here to tell you, if you part this life without Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, hell will be your home. And I know that people don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. That's the fact. Jesus Christ is the only one that bridged the gap between heaven and hell. There's no other way. Are you delaying? Are you moving forward? Are you hesitating? Are you moving forward? Last thing I want to give you is I pray that you would cry out now. That you would wait no longer. Whatever it is that's going on in your life, the situation around you, the people around you that need Jesus, cry out for them. Listen, it, look, sometimes we're on the mountaintop, and it's great to be on the mountaintop, but if you're on the mountaintop, that means somebody's in the valley. Somebody's in the valley. I always talk about my friends, with my, my redneck friends that have winches, right? They just, I probably, maybe I'll use that one time, I don't know, but they, they love going around, right? They're, they're picking, they just, they, just, they just want somebody to be stuck. Yeah, amen, yeah. We're calling on you, brother. And I, and I talked about how spiritually, what if we would get a spiritual winch and just have it attached to us all the time? And when you're on that mountaintop, and, and, that, and when my brother falls or my, or my sister falls, I get that winch out. 
I'm like, you ain't going to be there long because I'm praying for you. I'm crying out on your behalf. I want you to know that you can't get low enough for God not to bring you out of this. And I'm here for you. And this church is here for you. And we are crying out. That's good. Amen. Are you hesitating? Are you moving forward? Are you to stand still? Are you crying out? I'm going to ask you all to stand. Can you all get a song? The, can, can, Because I believe that there's somebody in this room that just needs to cry out. That you've been through some stuff just like this blind beggar that Jesus, just cry out to Jesus. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And then the devil's right there beside you, right? Right in the other ear. Just say, hey, just pop it down. Pop it down. Don't take a step. Don't go to that altar tonight. Listen, it's not going to fix nothing. Jesus can't do anything for you. I plead with you to cry out louder tonight. I plead with you as, as the devil's in one ear telling you to stay right where you're at. That you just tell him to shut up, devil. Get behind me. And you cry out anyway. Because I'm here to tell you that, yes, what happened to you, what you went through, what you feel now is real. But Jesus is passing by. You see that blind beggar? He was blind and he was a beggar. And that was his situation. That was the place he was in. But what you've got to realize is, the difference was, is Jesus was passing by. And he was willing to cry out. He was willing to call out no matter who was around him, no matter what was going on. Jesus, have mercy on me. And I'm here to tell you not, church, if you will grab a hold of that, if you will believe that, Amen. I'm telling you, he'll change everything for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're here tonight and you don't know him, stop delaying. If you're here tonight and you've got that empty void, that empty spot within you, and you're trying to fill it with every single track that you can throw your way, I'm telling you tonight, let Jesus into the void. And he will fill you with joy like you've never had. Church, I'm telling you, don't delay. Cry out now. Maybe you're on the mountaintop tonight. I'm telling you, you know somebody that needs Jesus. You know somebody that their current state is like the blind beggar. But Jesus is passing by. Brother, you know Jesus? Let me say something. This guy right here. As Jesus living within him. You know, you know Jesus? Amen. He's got Jesus living within him. You know Jesus? He's got Jesus living within him. See what's happening right here? Let me tell you something about now. You may have some issues. You may have some troubles. But I got Jesus Christ within my heart. And he is passing by. And all you got to do is grab somebody and say, listen, I'm in a rut. I'm in a valley. I need to pray. Would you pray for me? And you got to know something, church. If you have Jesus Christ living within This is 
is truly holy ground, Josh Bowman. This is truly a place of healing. I can feel it all over me every time I come. But are you willing to move forward? Because I'm telling you, hesitation is deadly. I'm telling you, delay is deadly. Jesus. Maybe you just need to practice saying, the Bible said, Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before me, I'll be ashamed of you for my Father, which is in heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, God, as I come to you, they continue to sing. God, I pray right now, Lord, that you would move like a rushing mighty wind. And God, I pray, Lord, that the words that were said, Lord, that the message that was preached would take root inside of our hearts and our minds and our spirits and our souls. And Lord, that we can apply it right now, not tomorrow, not delaying till tomorrow, not Lord, to wait until the next day. But God, that we would take it today and that we would have a hunger for you. That we would be thirsty for you. God, that we would lead to you. God, that we would want more of you today than we did yesterday. God, in Jesus' name I pray. In the name of Jesus I pray. God, I pray right now for you. Able to be in one body, one body. That we would take this thing to pray. But God, that we would fill it up. And you would fill it up. In Jesus' name I pray. If you need to pray, I'd ask you to come.